what's up y'all it's dr paul with liberty hill comics with another mail call this is a very special book today that we're opening so quiet on the set i expect reverence and uh hopefully you're going to be as excited as i am to see this book if you're new to the channel welcome i'm dr paul kosnick I have over 40 years experience collecting comics, investing in comics, and I share my passion and experience here on the channel. Liberty Hill Comics. And occasionally we do some comic book conservation too. A book of this magnitude requires a lot of layers of protection, so this is appropriate. And this is from a vendor called Battlegrounds Games and Comics. Uh, this happens to be an eBay auction that I won, but they have whatnot as well. Uh, so they are very experienced. I'll put some links in the description. Um, I'm very confident that this, this book is going to be as expected and safe. So I'm saying that up front even before I see the book. You can tell these are vendors that understand when you have a high-end comic book you pack it appropriately. Wow, there you go. You've got a little glimpse of it already. Whew. Look at that. <laughs> How's that for a reveal? Wow. Look at that. I feel like I'm in the presence of greatness here. Incredible. Wow. Well, I told you we'd have a big unboxing today. What is it and why do we care? Well, this is obviously Fantastic Four number 48 in a CGC 9.2 with white pages. It's the March 1966 issue, written by Stan the Man Lee and illustrated by Jack King Kirby. This is the first appearance of the Silver Surfer and also the first appearance of Galactus, although CGC refers to the Galactus appearance as a cameo. Although neither of them is on the cover, this book is so iconic that it's one of the few instances in which I think the cover really transcends what's going on inside the book. And it's fine that the first appearance of the characters are not on the cover in this instance. The following issue, number 49, is the first cover appearance of the Silver Surfer and Galactus. It's one of my favorite Silver Age covers. But this book here is the first appearance, so this book is definitely more sought after, more valuable in the marketplace, though number 49 has been closing the gap in recent years. And 49 is nearly as valuable and sought after as 48, be just because of that stunning cover and it's a continuation of this really great story. This book was published at the height of the Marvel Age, during the Silver Age when Marvel was dominating the market and making culturally relevant comic books. Stan and company were revolutionizing the industry with their approach to storytelling and presentation of imperfect heroes with which the readers could really relate. The introduction of the Silver Surfer to the Marvel Universe is one of the most impactful of a long list of creations and innovations that Stan and Jack were rolling out every month. Fantastic Four was their main vehicle for creating the foundation of the Marvel Universe from which everything that we enjoy today was built. For that reason, for me, it's really difficult to overstate the importance of this book for the foundation of the Marvel Universe and everything that came after, 
which is why this book has been a grail for 40 years now. Robert Overstreet's comic book price guide started differentiating number 48 from the surrounding issues as a key issue with the 10th edition, listing it as approximately two and a half times the value of the issues immediately preceding it at $24 versus $9 in 1980 money. So collectors have been seeking this major key for a long time. If you haven't read this book, the story is very tightly plotted. The first third of the book wraps up the inhuman story from the preceding issue, which concluded a three issue story arc introducing the inhumans to the Marvel Universe. While our heroes are returning home from the Himalayas where the inhumans used to reside before relocating the great refuge to the moon, we get our first glimpse of the Silver Surfer with some great cosmic visuals courtesy of King Kirby. Stan and Jack built great suspense and even like a frenzied hysteria you can feel when you read the book prior to the big Galactus reveal on the last page. By 1966, the FF and their mythos were four years old and regular readers knew that the Skrulls were one of the most dreadful and feared races of the entire cosmos. So when the mere presence of the Silver Surfer has the assembled Skrull Armada hiding and shaking in their boots, we know the Silver Surfer portends something really big. When our heroes return to New York City, the sky is ablaze and the entire city is in a panic. It's then Ben Grimm notices there appear to be two suns in the sky. After some research, the Watcher reveals himself and explains that the burning skies and the double sun are his doing and very dramatically exclaims that he was trying to obscure the earth from the Silver Surfer, but has failed, and the earth and everyone on it are now doomed. For, of all who inhabit the known universe, only Galactus has power to match that of the Watcher. The Silver Surfer, not fooled by the Watcher's schemes, lands and completely ignoring the FF and the Watcher signals for Galactus. At this point, the FF want to confront the Silver Surfer, but the Watcher explains that they need to forget him and prepare their defenses for Galactus, the ultimate danger. Galactus spans the galaxy in mere moments while our heroes look on in dismay, and we get this great Jack Kirby photo montage of Galactus' ship above the Earth with New York City and the moon both in the background. The last panel of the book finally reveals Galactus and prepares us for issue number 49 next month. Is it any wonder this comic book is a grail to many collectors? There are over 7,500 universal copies of Fantastic Four number 48 in the CGC census with a median grade of 5.5. That means this copy at 9.2 qualifies for high grade status for this Silver Age grail as it sits just inside the sixth percentile. This book, like many comic books and indeed many assets, has had a volatile run the last three years. During the pandemic, fair market value soared to new heights and nine twos were trading hands regularly above $20,000. With a high watermark of $24,000 for a 9.2 with white pages auctioned at Heritage on April 11th of 2022. That is some expensive paper. Since that purchase, however, each subsequent sale has been lower than the previous one until my purchase of this book on January 15th, 2023 for $10,600. Amazingly, the very next day, another 9.2 with white pages sold at Heritage Auction for $12,600, a $2,000 bump in one day. Where the price goes from here is anyone's guess. Did I luck out and hit the bottom? Or is the 12.6 sale on Heritage a dead cat bounce and we still see further to fall? Only time will tell, but I have some thoughts on this point in time in the comic book market.
If we look at returns of other assets in 2022, we have a rather remarkable year for how bad it was across all asset classes. The S&P 500, the broad US large cap stock index, was down 18% for the year. US bonds were down over 12%. 2022 was the first year since 1870 that both stocks and bonds were down greater than 10% for the year. Gold, usually considered a safe haven, was fractionally down on the year as well. And the asset that has come to correlate better than any other with collectibles, cryptocurrency, got hit the hardest. Bitcoin, the largest cryptocurrency, was down 81% in 2022. FF48 in a 9.2, is down 56% from the highs of $24,000 less than a year ago to my purchase of $10,600 this month. In light of these data, many people may be fearful that the worst is yet to come. After all, both Bitcoin and comics are still way up from historical highs of five years ago, and both, frankly, have no real intrinsic value. Others, like myself, feel these prices are an opportunity to purchase assets that a year ago felt unreasonably high and or out of reach. While we have no way of knowing today whether FF48 will resume an upward trajectory, sentiment ultimately determines bottoms in all markets. And there is so much negativity in the comic investing community that I think the bottom is in or nearly in for most books. The way market bottoms work is when everyone is capitulated and the panic selling has come to an end, prices stabilize and then they rebuild. A quick scan of YouTube will demonstrate that the sky is falling, prices are in a free fall, doomsday type videos are dominating any positive comic book investment videos right now by at least five to one. Just look at your feeds on YouTube. At times like these, I remember the words of the great Oracle of Omaha, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. Relative to other asset classes, comic books look extremely attractive to me right now. So whether or not the bottom is in yet, I'm putting capital to work in comic books because I think their relative performance is likely to outpace other asset classes going forward but I'm not putting money into just any comic books. I'm looking for high grade grail type keys, just like FF48 in a 9.2. This book is for my personal collection, but I still want to be very well bought on my collection because getting a good deal on a high grade Silver Age key is a big part of the fun for me. In addition to being fifth percentile in the CGC census, the fact that the paper quality is so high that it still has white pages after 55 years is astonishing to me. I own a mid-grade copy of this book that I will likely clean, press, submit to CGC, and look for an opportunity to move on to another collector to offset my costs on this book in the future. A book this iconic is not beholden to MCU speculation, but after Disney's acquisition of 20th Century Fox was completed, Kevin Feige announced that the FF were going to kick off phase six of the MCU with a feature film in February of 2025. That's still two years out and a lot can happen, but many folks believe that movie will have to tell the story of FF 48, 49, and 50, one of the most classic of all FF tales. Time will tell, but I know we're going to have a lot of fun speculating between now and then. I hope you enjoyed this video on this Silver Age mega key. I want to thank Battlegrounds Games and Comics for a great transaction. Again, I'll put some links in the description below to their marketplaces. Do you think I jumped in too early and there's more pain to come in the comic book market? Or do you think I somehow hit the bottom at 10.6 on this book? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Until next time, happy hunting and take care of one another.